एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल एंड आल्सो वेलकम बैक टू द एंड ऑफ जेट बेस सीरीज बाय फार वी हैव लर्न हाउ टू लॉग इन यूजिंग फायरबेस ऑथेंटिकेशन एंड फायरबेस रियल टाइम डेटाबेस नॉट ओनली दैट बट वी हैव आल्सो लर्न हाउ टू स्टोर डेटा इन फायरबेस रियल टाइम डेटाबेस हाउ टू स्टोर इमेजेस इन फायरबेस स्टोरेज एंड हाउ टू स्टोर वीडियोस इन फायरबेस स्टोरेज एंड लास्टली हाउ टू स्टोर डेटा इन फायर स्टोर is and that great as i mentioned at the beginning of the series we will create a project that covers all the topics of firebase we have learned so far and here we are so we will be creating a resume app where a user can create an entire resume by adding their personal details qualification details skills work experience and a profile photo we will be storing all of these details in firebase real time database and firebase cloud storage Not only that, but we can view the resume, but we can also download the resume in a PDF format. Isn't that cool? Let me show you the demo. This is our first screen where we will add the personal details such as profile photo, name, email, phone, and location. Click on next. Then we will add the qualification details and skills, which include degree, institution, start year. end year and skills again click on next then lastly add the experience details such as previous company name role years of experience and responsibilities click on finish this is what the resume preview looks like click on save this will store all the data in the firebase real time database as well as firebase cloud storage for images You can also edit the details and save them again. See, it is reflected in the database as well. Now let's download the PDF. Save it, and here it is—a complete resume in a PDF format that you can actually use and share for job applications. Also, it's a CRUD-based app, so create, read, update, and now delete. The resume will be deleted from the database. and now you can create a new resume cool right of course it's not a professional resume creator app but definitely a beginner friendly you can add more advanced features to it like multiple resumes can be created within one app more fields more organized user login right for now this project itself is very big big as in you have to write a lot of code for it hence i have divided the project into four parts This is our part 1 where we'll set up the database and firebase. So let's begin. Open Android Studio, create a new Jetpack Compose project. I'll name it My Resume App and click on finish. First thing first, connect our project with Firebase. Go to Tools, Firebase, choose Real Time Database. Get started with Real Time Database. Click on Connect to Firebase. Firebase console will be open automatically. Click on create a Firebase project. I'll keep the name as it is. Follow the steps shown on the screen. And done. Our project is successfully connected to Firebase. Next, add SDK by clicking on Accept Changes. Then go back to the Firebase console. In your project, choose Real Time Database, Create Database, choose US as the server, start in test mode, and click on Enable. Our project is successfully connected to the Firebase Real Time Database. We also need Firebase Storage, so let's set up that as well. So choose cloud storage. The cloud storage requires a premium account of Firebase, which is Blaze. Currently, I am using Firebase Spark, which is a free account. Now you do not have to spend any money. You just need to upgrade your account as shown. To use the Blaze account, we also need a cloud billing account. I already have one, so I'll just use that one. Also, while creating a billing account, it will ask for auto pay of fifteen thousand. But don't worry, it won't cut your money at all. It's a free trial for ninety days. Once you have a billing account, link it with your Firebase, and there you go. See, 
it says pay as you go so it will charge you money only if you use the premium service or anything above the limit that too after 90 days after the project is done cancel the auto pay simple now click on get started choose the server location start in test mode and done our cloud storage is set up this is where the images will be stored also we can add firebase authentication but anonymously firebase anonymous login allows user to interact with your apps feature without needing to provide any personal information or create a separate account if you want to make it advanced you can use an email password or otp login this way the resume will be saved even after the app is closed but for simplicity i'll go with anonymous now come back to android studio go to gradle add these 10 dependencies i'll mention them in the description box so you can copy and paste them from there all of these are for navigation life cycle firebase coroutines pdf generation and coil coil is used to display images click on sync now and done. next create a package data inside it create a data class i'll name it models here we will add all the data parameters that we are supposed to save starting with personal details which include the name whose data type is string and then the email phone location and photo url simple next qualification skills which include a degree institution start year end year and skills the next experience that includes responsibilities experience years company and role and that's all right but to make it more organized and manageable we are going to contain them in one data class that is resume data so all parts of a resume such as personal details qualification skills and experience stay together as one complete unit making it easier to save, retrieve, and manage. Hence, first it holds an ID, a unique identifier for the resume, then the three grouped pieces of data class, personal details, qualification skills, and experience. Instead of dumping all fields into one long data class, the resume is broken into three data class, later combined into one data class, making it easier to manage. Next, we will create one more data class, UI state. This class represents the state of your resume, like creating, updating, or displaying basically behind the scenes. It contains a resume object that is a resume data class, which includes all the other data classes. Then, local photo URA, which stores a path to a selected photo from the user's device. Then there is ease saving, a boolean flag that tells the UI whether the app is currently saving data. Next, last saved ID is a way to remember the most recent resume entry that was saved. Finally, a message is a simple way to show success or error messages to the user. Together, resume data models the actual content of the resume, while UI state models everything the screen needs to know at a given moment. Got it? Next. Let's set up the repository. So create a new class, resume repository. Here we will set up the Firebase database and its CRUD operations. The resume repository acts as a middleman between your app and Firebase, handling all the data operations. At the start, it sets up two important connections, one to the Firebase real-time database and another to Firebase storage. It also defines a user ID property, so every resume is linked to the currently login user. But if no one is signed in, then guessed. Now all the CRUD operations where our first function is create or update. It's like either we are creating or updating the existing one, right? It contains parameters such as resume data, which is all our fields, and bitmap for the profile photo. At the end, it will return the resume data. It first checks whether the incoming resume data has an ID. If not, it generates one using Firebase push key 
or a random UUID to guarantee uniqueness. This is the path where the resume details will be saved. Next, it prepares the photo. If the resume already has a stored photo that is in photo URL, it keeps it. But if the user provides a new photo as a bitmap, that is local photo bitmap is not null, means photo is present. Then the image is compressed into JPG bytes and uploaded to the Firebase storage under the photo path as shown, which is tied to the user and resume ID. Next, a new photo URL is generated with its new download link. With the ID and photo URL ready, the function creates an updated copy of the resume using Kotlin's copy function to ensure it's immutable, which means fixed. Finally, this updated resume is saved into the Firebase real-time database under the current user's collection as shown in the path and the updated object is returned. In short, the function ensures that both text details and profile photos are properly stored, updated, and always linked to the right resume. Got it? Next, the repository also provides a fetch function, which simply looks up a resume by its ID in the database and converts it back into resume data object. See, using ID path, the data is stored in the resume data variable and then using get value, it is fetched. Then next, a delete function which removes both the resume from the database and its photo from storage using ID. See, using ID's path, it removes the data from the database using remove value and then using ID's photos path, it deletes the photo from the storage. But what is this run catching? It is a Kotlin function that safely runs a block of code and wraps the result in a result object. It also handles the exception without crashing by returning either a success value or a failure with the exception. It's more like a try-catch block but a cleaner version of it. Lastly, do not forget to initialize Firebase. We will initialize Firebase inside the app class. Hence, create a new class, app. The app class will extend the application because the application runs before any activity and leaves for the entire app's lifecycle. Now you will be wondering why we can't initialize it in main activity. Because main activity only exists when the specific screen is active, while application is active for all the screens. So in some cases, we can initialize it in main activity, but not for all. Got it? Now initialize the Firebase. Then next, a coroutine scope with dispatchers.io. It will be used because signing in is a network operation and should run off the main tray to avoid freezing the UI. Again, we will use run catching. Inside it, anonymous signing is done so that even without user registration, the app still gets a valid Firebase user ID, which is required to read write data in the Firebase real-time database or storage securely. And uh, we will continue the code in part 2 where we'll set up the view model and navigation. So yeah, that's it for the video. If you are new to this channel, then please consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.